Hmm, that wasn't bad, was it? I hope you liked that little clip I did in the beginning. But before we dive into the topic for today, I just want to ask you to quickly leave a comment below and uh, let me know how are you guys doing? Because honestly, the last week has been one of the most challenging weeks for me. We released a new single, which uh, has been doing really well. People have been loving it. We got a bunch of uh, press media coverage for the song. And uh, we also did a couple of online gig uh, filming and streaming from the studio. So it was really good time. But at the same time, there were many lives lost. And some of them were people that we knew really well, close, near and dear ones. And uh, it's been a fairly challenging time to... To, to see our friends and people that we knew suddenly uh, not exist around us. So do take a moment and uh, leave a comment below and let me know how are you doing today and I hope you're doing well. Now let's get to the topic. So all the tones that you heard in that first clip, the little jam was completely within Logic Pro X. Now, how did I get to doing that? The first thing is the drum track and for this I'm using Logic's drummer track and I've selected Rose being the drummer and R&B being the style and she plays, um, as it's mentioned here, a lot of cross stick driven grooves and a dry natural sounding kit. So this is what the drums sound like on its own. And after that, uh, for bass, I plugged in my Sire bass, the Marcus Miller bass, straight into a Logic's bass amp and I'm running a little preset here which is called deep and that just did the trick and here's what the bass sounds like on its own quite a deep sound but i've kept it like that since it's more like a like a demo thing that i'm showing how you can go through i'm not really worried about sculpting the tone as much. The next thing would be my clean guitar. Here's the first clean and for this I'm using Logic's uh, amp uh, which is a British combo and it's basically based on a Vox AC30 and uh, the settings are fairly simple. One of the, the tips and tricks that I can give you is that try not to crank up your gain too much because certain amps start sounding really funny when you crank the gain way too much. Here's my clean guitar tone. I've done a similar pattern but a, a, like a different inversion using a rhythm channel and in this case I'm using this really funny looking blue amp. I don't know what is this amp based on. It looks like straight from Cartoon Network's Jetsons <laughs> if you watched it growing up. And uh, But yeah, the thing is I found this to be one of the best. I've tried a lot of these British blues combo. The brown stack was this was fairly okay. Uh, I tried a whole bunch of these, but somehow I felt the ones that are modeled after popular amps that we guys often play through, they somehow sounded really disappointing. These guitars are panned to the, the other side of the spectrum. Just listen to it. And if I play them together, For the lead patch, firstly, I'm using the overdrive plugin and I did not want to use the, the amp Stormbox plugin and run an overdrive within that. Those overdrives sounded quite bad for me. Once you try the overdrive setting here, then I'm running that into the same amp with very similar settings as I'm running for the rhythm section. But only thing is because I'm running it in front of an overdrive, it tends to push the amp a little more, you know, and uh, if you compare it with the gain structure that I've used here, you see it's fairly similar. It's not, only the mids are a little more cranked here and I kind of brought the mids down because of the guitar that I was using uh, eventually when I played the lead, which is my Ernie Ball Luke 3. Uh, so I had to make slight changes and even presence knob, I brought it down because this guitar is fairly bright compared to the ES. And after that, I'm running it 
through a tube EQ. Now this tube EQ is something I forgot to mention earlier, even for the, the rhythm patch, it makes a massive difference. Now this tube EQ, if you are used to using analog um, EQs or if you're used to using analog based EQs, then you'll recognize instantly is based after a Pultec EQ. And uh, most often, if you if you know uh, people who use the hardware version of this, they'll often tell you that they prefer keeping the, the pull tech in the chain, even if it's not boosting or cutting any signal at all, because they claim that somehow it did something to the signal and it and it kind of added a certain color and most people loved it. And I felt it kind of brought in a little more body into the sound. So I really liked what it was doing. So I've left that tube EQ. But in my case, I have done some tweaks as well. Uh, I've done some high attenuation here. After that, I've added a compressor. Then I'm going for a fairly uh, fast attack and a quick, super quick release. So seemed to kind of work. <laughs> gone for a really slight reverb and a delay i'm using a tape delay pretty much at the stock setting without tweaking much i've pulled the dry completely out and then i'm using a silver verb which is again from logic on a default setting that it opens now with the end time mix <laughs> Honestly, software amplifiers can surprise us quite a bit these days because they're just getting better and better each day. And I think it's it's beautiful to see how much softwares are able to achieve. Now, of course, in a typical scenario, I would prefer plugging in my uh, guitars into an actual amp, like the orange stack that you see behind me, and miking it with an actual microphone, uh, placing it in, in the tracking room where I usually place my guitar cabinets and drum kits and all of that and um, recording them and, and that's how I prefer doing it. But then what if you don't have all of these? What if you're not fortunate enough to, to have a studio of your own where you can crank your amplifier as loud as you want and record them and, and not really be disturbing your neighbors? Or maybe you don't have all the equipment itself to be able to do that. Then uh, I, I understand that all of this requires uh, a significant amount of investment. And uh, it could be a little challenging to do that. It took me years to set this up. But having said that, you don't have to be discouraged. Now, this video actually happens to be a response to the uh, question that I often get from multiple clients, you know, when they visit the studio and I request them to try and work on their guide track before they get to the studio. Most of them have a common complaint. I don't have the right gear to be able to record my guitar. It just sounds really bad. So I decided to take it up as a challenge and said, okay, what if I strip everything off and if I just plug my guitar straight into my audio interface and use the plugin that comes with Logic and see how good can the guitar tones get. I was personally quite impressed with what I could achieve and of course there are certain things that you need to keep in mind when you're working with um, the tones or working on your tones within a software virtual amplifier. To begin with, as I said, the traditional way would be to plug in your guitar into an amp and mic the speaker cabinet, but Logic Pro offers all of these things in a virtual format. So you have a head, you have a speaker cabinet and a microphone and a bunch of mics actually, and you can try and choose between the different amplifiers, different speaker cabinets and different microphone and place the mics differently. And you're kind of trying to simulate what you would be doing in a real life situation. There are plenty of uh, amp models within Logic and you've got to go through each of them. Now here's a little tip that I can give you. A lot of it depends on your guitar that you're plugging in. Your guitar pickups makes a huge difference. So the first thing I would say is try and get your guitar in good shape. If it means you've got to invest in changing the, the volume and the tone parts so that it responds and does exactly what it's supposed to do, then I would definitely recommend doing that because most of the entry level 
guitars that you find in music stores have these potentiometers not exactly performing or doing the things that they're supposed to do. And that immediately compromises the tone that's going out of your guitar into the audio interface. And there's very little your software amp and stuff like that can do if the tone from your guitar is not exactly as good as you want it to be. So try and get your guitar, fix it up, service it, and get things in its best possible shape. And from there, work through the different amp models and see which ones you like. I'm gonna leave a link below so you can download all of these amp presets that I have created and uh, the channel strip presets precisely with all the EQ and compression settings that I've loaded in. Feel free to load them into your software and have fun. Don't be afraid to change some of the settings if you wanna modify it to fit your guitar and your kind of playing style. And uh, there are plenty of virtual amps that you'll find in the market and some of the really good ones that I have played through firstly would be the universal audio amplifiers. I think they're fantastic plugins and uh, they sound fabulous so it's a great great addition in case you own a universal audio interface. If you don't own one and you don't want to be tied down to a hardware then you could definitely look at the neural DSP plugins. They are quite impressive and they do a stellar job at capturing really good guitar sounds. I've even tried the Slate Digital Bundle, which I own, and um, I wasn't too happy with the amp models on it and uh, the sound that I was able to achieve. Maybe I need to spend some more time and see if I could get something better than that, but it, was, it wasn't it was quite what I was expecting, so I'm still trying to work on that. But Logic is something I've been comfortable for many years, so it was easier for me to dial these tones. And more importantly, I thought, uh, chances are you may own a copy of Logic, if not a Slate Digital or Neural DSP or any of these. So um, why not use Logic? That's the reason behind this, this video. I wanted to use the Logic amps and show you that you can get a really good usable tone if you really dial uh, your stuff patiently and understand what exactly are you going after. So let me know in the comment below, what are your favorite virtual amps and why would you use those? And also let me know that would you consider using software amplifiers in your full production, in your full-fledged production for your album or EP or a single, or would you just like to use it for guide tracks or scratch tracks and, and maybe use an actual amplifier for the final takes? What would you do? I hope to see you soon in another video. I hope you like the little jam in the beginning. Let me know what you feel about it anyway. Thank you for subscribing and ringing the bell. My name is Varun from the Red Music Box and do not forget to create, play and record.